come to day five in our video series looking at the life of Peter throughout the various Gospels. Uh, we saw on day one, Luke chapter five, that Jesus invited Peter to follow him. He said, come follow me, I'll make you a fisher of men. And Peter left everything and went all in and followed Jesus. But then we saw in Mark chapter eight that Peter may not have known fully what he signed up for because Peter thought, it seems, that Jesus was going to establish an earthly kingdom of comfort and fame and glory. But Jesus says, no, 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 that's not why I'm here. Peter, you have the things of man in your mind, not the things of God. I came to suffer and give my life and die and raise from the dead. And he says to Peter, if you want to follow me, you must deny yourself. Nevertheless, Peter continues to follow him. And we, le we led up to the third day when Jesus said to his followers, all of you will abandon me. And Peter says, not me, I'm in, I am loyal. I'm gonna be there, Jesus, I'll follow you even to death. But we saw that he was overconfident. And sure enough, later that very night, he denied Jesus three times. Grant preached last night. And in that sermon, we, we saw in Peter's denial, the guilt and the shame of sin that led to tears but it was the cross that Jesus carried that offered forgiveness for Peter. So it's Saturday today, and if we think back 2,000 some years, it was Saturday between the cross and the empty tomb. And on that Saturday, Peter must have been pretty heavy hearted and heartbroken. See, we can look back with the perspective of history and know that on Sunday, the grave will be empty. But Peter didn't know that. He had to be wondering, what now? How could the last three years of my life have all been in vain? How could the Lord, who I saw do miracles, be crucified? He was probably afraid, thinking that some people who put Jesus on the cross may even be coming for him. He maybe thought he should go back to his hometown, but then thought, if I do that, maybe people there will think I'm a fool. Saturday was probably a pretty hard day for Peter, a day of difficulty and sorrow. But that was from the perspective of earth. From heaven's perspective, we now know through the rest of the story in the Bible, God was doing something. He was preparing to show the hope of resurrection power over the dead. He was also doing something in Peter and his disciples in that desert day, in that time of sorrow. See, often God uses suffering he uses disappointment and sorrow to shape us and prepare us for something later on. We see that in the nation of Israel, the Lord rescues them from Egypt. He's with them in the, in the wilderness. He gives them his law, but they wander for 40 years as the Lord's discipline to prepare a new generation to enter the promised land. We see that in the life of King David. King David, a man after the Lord's own heart, but also a man who committed adultery and murder and lies to cover it up. In Psalm 51, after his sin, we see a tender heart of repentance and crying out to the Lord. In Psalm chapter, in Psalm 119, verse 67, David writes, Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I obey your word. See, sometimes when life is good, we're not really committed to the Lord, but it's in that time of affliction that we see that we need him and God is preparing us. And we see this also in Peter's life. See, at one point in Peter's life, in Matthew chapter 16, Peter professed that Jesus was the Messiah, the King. And Jesus said to Peter, this is Matthew 16, verse 18, and I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock, I will build my church. Jesus is doing a little play on words there. He's using the name Peter, Petros, which means stone or pebble. And he's saying, you're a little rock, you're a little stone, a little pebble, but I'm gonna make you the Petra, the rock, the foundation upon which I build the church. Now, of course, we've seen Peter's life this week and he's anything but stable, he's impulsive, he's emotional, he's a little bit erratic as a follower of Jesus. So he's not exactly a rock. And of course, Peter is not the ultimate rock the church is built upon, it's Jesus. But Jesus uses Peter in the book of Acts 
to preach the gospel and 3,000 people come to faith in Jesus and are baptized and the church is born. So Jesus's power comes through Peter as a, an instrument, a foundation stone in the beginning of his church. I can't help but wonder if maybe Saturday was a part of that preparation process for Peter. Maybe that day of sadness and sorrow where, was where God was softening Peter's heart and teaching him humility and reliance and trust and preparing his heart for the hope that would come on Sunday. I also wonder if that could be happening right now in these days of the coronavirus pandemic. I certainly do not know God's purposes in this time on our globe. But I wonder, could he be softening our hearts? Could he be preparing his church for a time of greater mission and greater zeal and greater repentance and greater intensity? See, sometimes it's on Saturday in our times of desperation where God is doing a work of preparation in his people. And I think, I hope that maybe he's doing that right now not only in Christ Community Church of Gridley, but in his global church, that as we sense our, our inadequacy and our need for him, that he's actually cultivating in us hope and the hope of Jesus Christ. You see, 2,000 years ago, Peter and the disciples sat there pretty dejected on Saturday. But as it's often said on the week of Easter, Sunday was coming. We have the hope of the risen King, Jesus Christ. Church, I know some of these days are hard. I know the future is uncertain, but the ultimate future is that Jesus Christ is the coming King who will come for his people so we can have great hope this Easter season.